Hello fellow survivors and welcome back to Road to 500 Days and Single Void which we're going to do now. I am right where you left me as usual here in Single Valley. Single Valley, wow, Pleasant Valley. And we're going to do the Single Void now because the Aurora has been triggered. We repaired the radio tower so now it's just about going out there and finding this bunker. I have a pretty good idea of where it is. Uh, I haven't actually been <clears throat> to it before, but I'm pretty sure it's like over here somewhere. And we're going to take advantage that Nero is so early, and I'm, we're going to go around Pleasant Valley. There, we forgot to pick up the firmus that's over here. So we're going. What we're going to do? We're going to go find a single void bunker, and then from there make our way to the firmus. And as we make our way there, we'll see if we can find any supply caches with the radio while we're at it. And then we'll head back home to the barn. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, so before we head out, let me just double check my inventory. Is there anything I really need to take with, for example? Uh, I guess we don't really need the charcoal, but we'll take it. Uh, I don't know if we need these pies because we're not going to be carrying too much stuff, I don't think. I might leave those behind. We're not going to take these with either, that's for sure. But I think uh, food-wise, water-wise, yeah, we're not going to be out very long. But I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I'm mostly worried about the Aurora Wolves, you see. That's the main thing. So I think we're going to drop these pies here. Uh, just because they smell. Not a lot, but they do smell. Let's put them here, actually. I don't think we'll be needing them. Pro probably not. And water, we got water, food, uh, we'll grab some food out here, I think. I'd carry one piece of meat that I, uh, and get rid of. And then we also need to, oh, feathers, we need to finish harvesting these wolves if we can. But that's not important right now. Uh, let's have a piece of meat. And we'll carry the rest of this piece of meat, I think, on us. How um, big is this piece? Not very big, but that's alright. We'll eat it once we can. <clears throat> now, before we get going, one more thing. See this barn over here? So, astute viewers of mine who have watched quite a bit of this series, have noticed that I didn't find a car battery. I was looking all over it, I triple checked up there, and I also went all the way to Keeper's Pass, where I eventually found, found one, and all around Pleasant Valley, so I spent quite a long time trying to find the car battery and I eventually found it in Keeper's Pass. Now in a few of my episodes prior to this, quite a few people said that I should check the barn outside the farmhouse for the car battery. A lot of people found it there. And I always assumed they meant this barn over there, which I did check twice and there's no battery. And I have found the battery in that barn before another run, so I just naturally assumed it was that one. And no one really said anything. But then in the last episode someone pointed out that no, no, no. What we meant was this barn. Which is not really a barn as such, like maybe it is. I always thought of it more as like a shed or something. Oh, Aurora kicked in. But anyway, I haven't actually looked there to see if there is a car battery. But you know what? I'm not going to check now because if there is one, I'm going to die inside a little bit. Because then I made all this journey and there was a car battery right next door. So all we'll do is we'll check there, but after we've done Signal Void. Because otherwise, oh god, what a... What a detail we would have done if there is one there. Now it's a little cold out. I wished it was a bit warmer, but here we are. In any case, uh, let's get out the radio. We don't seem to have a signal. Yes, we do. We do have a signal. Yeah. So we're going to go and find this bunker. We don't have a signal for these, so no supply cache. But we do have other bunker. So off we go. We hear the Aurora is in effect. We got the lights. We got anything. So now we have a row walls to worry about as well. Let's go. Okay, so we're going this way. Let's make sure here. Okay, this way. Alright. We'll go this way then. Now, the Aurora is very scary in the sense that you shouldn't really go out in the Aurora generally because. Um, the Aurora Wolves and Aurora Bears are much tougher than normal versions. They basically basically have more hit points. Did I just discover a cache? No, it's just this one. Yeah, it's this one. 
And uh, when you fight a bear, it basically effectively has double the health when it's in Aurora form compared to a normal bear. So it's quite a tough opponent, to be fair. <laughs> Very tough. And the rolls are the same. They they uh, they have more health. They don't do more damage, as far as we know, but they are a bit more persistent. They have a bit more higher aggro range, and they I think they stalk you farther. Well, I never tested that part, and uh, they have more health. The health puzzles just go by uh, content created blades CJ. Oh, sorry, blades TLD is called now. And uh, basically makes uh, the bears especially a much stronger opponent. Of course, I killed all the bears, so I don't think the Aurora bears will be much of an issue. But there will be a few Aurora wolves around. We have killed most of those too, so I'm not too worried about it. I am getting cold, and I really don't want to take too much damage while we're out in the Aurora. Because it's just going to keep getting cold. Uh, and colder and colder. And I don't have that much health, I have a half. Let's bring out the radio again. You were heading the right way. I'm not too worried about being cold right now because I don't think the bunker is too far away. And then we can always um, warm up in the bunker. Is it up here? Yeah, Seems right. like it. I'm guessing it's up there then. Unlike the last time I did one of these bunkers, we're, we're going to find it quite early in the episode as opposed to quite uh, late, which is fine. And as a, it's fun to do these little in-game stories. Now, I haven't actually been to all of the bunkers before, so I don't know the complete story of uh, Single Void or like, get the gist of it. Uh, but I, I believe it's meant to be quite ambiguous. Open to interpretation, and then Buried Echoes expands upon it. We'll do Buried Echoes in Son of Contamination after we've done all this stuff here. It's going to be a while still. Okay, so it's up here. I'm cold, that's right. So let's see what secrets there is. Well, there are in this place. Oh, we're up this place. Oh, I know this area. <laughs> I know this place. There's a, there's a special thing about this place. I'll tell you about it another time. Maybe not right now. This must be it, I assume. And indeed it is. There we go. All right, bunker number two. Let's go. Nice. All right, here we are. Search bunker beta. Yeah. Now, even though we do have lights and we can see, I'm still going to be using this so you can see even better. Rain flare. Okay. All right, very fallouty. Always look around here thoroughly. There's always stuff around here. And uh, here we can find canned corn. So until the latest update, this will come in handy. canned corn, which is used for, I'm not sure I have the recipe actually. Uh, do I have the recipe? Uh, I'm not sure I have it actually yet. But there's a recipe that requires canned corn. And um, you could only find those in single void bunkers. However, at the latest patch uh, of at the addition of sonal contamination, you can now find them in that zone too. So they're not exclusive to this anymore. Hey, yeah, canned corn. Look at that. Very cool. Moderate vitamin C. Very nice. It's not even expired. Water, we don't need that. Leave that there. Round anything here. Books, trash can. There's not much loot in these bunkers. That's what the developers have even stated, because remember that the single void wasn't even in Interloper. They, they didn't add it to Interloper at all when it was released, but because the community wanted it so much, they decided to add it after all, after basically a lot of peer pressure, so to speak. Um, but they, the developers basically said, well, there's hardly any loot at all on Interloper. We do get the technical balaclava at the end of it, but well, that's about it. Uh, but you get some stuff here and there. Is that everything? I think that's everything. I'm going to break this down though. Because there might be something behind it. I just can't see. 
No. Doesn't seem like it. Alright, let's keep going. There seems to be a different kind of bunker. And we got into transcript. We'll wait to pick it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Why though? Why is there a car battery in here? <sighs> that's like taking the mick a little bit. Come on. So that's where you went, huh? All right, well, whatever. Let's see here. Wow. Okay. Let's pick this up. I might even take it with me. We'll see. All right. Let's have a look at this. <clears throat> Session 12. Project medical officer interviewing patient 7. Back to the third instance. Find the bridge between them. Trying to. Okay, is it still memory stuff, huh? Okay. It starts the same as every other time. A dark room. Square. I feel the wall behind me, and I can barely make out the walls to the right and left. It's smooth, like steel or glass. Mm -hmm. I can't see the wall opposite me. It's too dim. I walk forward, and that's when I notice it. Every time. The pit. Just... A hole in the floor. <laughs> it's 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 funny. The floor seems to slope a little bit as it reaches the edge. Hmm. But the floor is made of bricks, bricks that start to bend. Right. Best I can tell. And the end, the last image you can remember. That's when it shows up. What shows up? Can you describe it? <laughs> From across the pit, where the other wall should be, something darker than everything around it sort of floating like a dark walker <laughs> it moves to the edge of the hole no face just a moving shape a shadow is it me my face god damn it man that's when I wake up every damn time right but that wasn't a memory thing, that was a dream thing. That's very different. I have some thoughts on that. But let me look around first. We can talk about it when we're out there walking in the cold. Now oh, there's bound to be something else here, right? Uh, we came from there. Is that it actually? That's the whole bunker? I think that is actually the whole bunker, isn't it? Did I finish it then? Search bunker beta. No, still missing some stuff. Look around here. Why is missing? Well, obviously this, but uh, car box, box. What am I missing here? Missing. Ladder. Missing something to pick up here. Because I haven't finished the story. Let's pick these up as well. Probably staring me in the face, right? Staring me in the face. Turning any of these valves? Or? Mm, what am I looking for? Not sure, <laughs> if I'm honest. I haven't been in this bunker before, so I don't know. Last time there was also like a chief logbook thing. really that blind? Is it staring me right in the face or is that it? Like if I leave now will it say I'm done or is it just not intuitive? What happens if I leave now? What happens then? Will it say I'm done? Let's see. Hmm. 
No, it doesn't. So it still it still says investigate search bunker beta. Okay, so back in we go. We gotta find this. Excuse me. Baby woke up. We are back. All right. Okay, back to searching. Sorry if you've done this and you're screaming at the screen like, "Oh my God, is very funny!" But I haven't actually done seen the void before. Uh, it's one of those things that because it takes a while to do all of them, I haven't actually uh, uh, done it. So I don't know exactly the content of these bunkers. It's pretty much the only aspect of the game I haven't really done. So I'm just gonna have a look around until I find something. Uh, anything um, in the cardboard boxes? I guess it could be, but it'd be kind of weird if that was the case. Why would it? Why would they do that? Uh, it makes sense that it's in a different room. Could I go over here, probably. Ah. There we are. That was right in front of my face. I just didn't see it. Ah, <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, the thing's still burning. The lamp, I think. Oh, well. We ran power to Rudiger's machine for the first time yesterday. All right. It was nothing like what they predicted, even at half energy. I still have no idea what the end game for all of this will be. The whole project. And I'm seeing now that few of the men building it do either. It's all over their faces. All this time underground isn't helping their morale, but I'm confident our fragile truce will hold until we're finished. We worked hard to make it this far after what happened to Team 3. Team 3, huh? But afterwards? Impossible to say. Alright. That should do it. There we go. That did it. It's done. Now it's Mountain Town that's left. Which we'll do later. Alright, so we did it. So, they have this Rudiger's machine thing. In the first bunker there was a whole bunch of stuff about... How to build it and all this stuff. Okay, we're gonna head now. Uh, I'm gonna reflect on this as we head... I think this way, towards Misty Falls. If you, there's a cave this way. Uh, we're like over here now, I think. Let's see if I can map actually just to get this bunker on the map before we continue. Let's have a look. Yeah, we got Hatcher. Now I am wondering. Hold on. Let's go inside and warm up a little bit. And we'll keep going. I can't feel my hands. Yeah, let's just uh, let's sleep here for like an hour. Just to warm up. I uh, don't know, so bed. There we are. Go. Okay, and then we're gonna go outside. And as we're here, I'm going to show you something. This area is special. So there's something you can do here. I'm only going to do this once. Just to show you it's possible. Unless they changed it. They may have changed it. Uh, let's see if it's still possible to do this. First I need to get up here. I go from this side or the other side. Let's see. Yeah, up there. Because we're going to enter Pleasant Valley Void. There's a shortcut you can take here. Hmm, bit annoying. And uh, let's just see if that's still valid. So you go all the way up here. Down there's the hatch. We're here now. Then we're going to go up here. And we're going to hug the wall as far as we can on the right here. 
might take more than one attempt. Up we go. Up, up, up. Yeah, and keep going. I'm going to get up to this ledge over here. Where if we did this right, we should just marginally be able to climb up here. Let's see if we can do this now. Now I have to do it again. Yeah, up we go, up we go. Yeah, okay, we got it. And now as we approach the lights of the long dark, we see for the very first time the void. The void that stares back into our soul. And this is the darkness. The darkness in the bunker. The ledge made of bricks pulling you in. Pulling you in. And as you feel the pull of the void of the abyss, there is only one thing to do. And that is... Enter the void. And we fly. Fly onto here. Look where we are. Jesus is Suddenly, cold. other side of the map. <laughs> Voila. Magic. And on we go. <laughs> Wasn't that something, huh? Tell you what, though. We're going to go inside here, warm up a bit, repair our sprains. <laughs> so that was the Pleasant Valley shortcut. Hey, look at this. Let's just uh, warm up a little bit because we're really cold. So I'll tell you all about what just happened in a second. <laughs> uh, but I'm really cold. Uh, let's eat this. And I need to just do something to warm up here, really. Uh, we can just pass time, I think. I don't really want to sleep. There we are. And I do need to bandage my feet. And I need to also bandage my uh, wrists as well. Because if a wolf shows up, we need to be able to kill it. So we need to use all of our bandages for this. Pain will go away by itself. There we are. All right. We're going to leave right now on the other side of the map. Funny how that works. Huh? So let me, before we talk about the bunker, explain what just happened. So every area, every region in the Long Dark has a kind of safety uh, point. So what happens is that if you were to fall outside of the map itself, the game will teleport you somewhere uh, on the map to kind of reset you. And where I just went is one of the shortcuts you can take to actually get out of the map and fall off the ledge into the void. And what happens is the game will, when it detects that you're off the ledge there, I mean, I don't know exactly how it works, but basically it will send you somewhere safe. In this case, to Cinder Hills Mine. A very special. And in the past, that shortcut I just used was actually an exploit that people used for speedrunning Hopeless Rescue. Because in the past, and I'm talking years ago, if you did what I just did, and you fell through into the void, you would be teleported to the entrance to Timberwolf Mountain. So you would skip the rope entirely and half the map. So people would go from Signal Hill to that place, jump into the void, and go into Timberwolf Mountain. Very cool, right? And uh, then they, with uh, the release of episode 3, uh, around there, they changed it so that when you then jump into the void, you teleported to the plane crash in the middle of the map instead. And now they've changed it again, and now you teleport to in the Hills Mines. <laughs> Which brings us closer to Misty Falls. Isn't that neat? Now what I just did falls under what I also did in Winding River. It's an out-of-bound trick. And I like, like to keep my runs relatively clear. I think it's too gimmicky to use those sort of things. But, as I said when I was in Mining River, I am happy to show these sort of things once. Just to show that they exist, so you see something new, something different, something exciting. But you won't see me, generally speaking, you won't see me use those sort of exploits or those sort of game mechanics in my runs. That's too gimmicky for me, too immersion breaking. It's a cool feature though that you can utilize if you really want to. 
So I appreciate that. But generally speaking, you won't see me do it. But I'm happy to do it once just to show you how it works. And I'm going to do that, what I just did, at least one more time in this run um, in Timberwolf Mountain. But another day, another time. And I might do it some other times too in other places, but generally speaking, I avoid it. And now you know. It looks dangerous, but if you jump in there, it resets you. <laughs> Isn't that something? And speaking of Rodinger's machine and the bunker that we just went into, let's think about what they said there. So I haven't finished seeing the voice, so I don't know where this is going. I know that it's meant to be vague. I know that Buried Echoes kind of continues it a little bit. There's this whole mystery about Rodinger's machine and whatever that is. And it's going to tie into episode 5 at some point. As uh, Royal Wolfie. Come here, Royal Wolfie. And uh, that's uh, fine. So, I thought that was quite fitting. To jump off the void like that. Because that was basically what the guy in the... Um, in the recording was talking about. He was talking about a... Uh, no signals, by the way, for like cash. He was talking about the pull of the void, which is a, a kind of a Nietzsche Freudian thing where you have this pull towards the abyss, that there is this chasm of infinite uh, darkness, kind of like Lassian or whatever it's called when you are in the ocean and the deep of the ocean is this pit of darkness and it's scary but it kind of pulls you in and you can't really explain it and um, there's a, a, a manga about that it's called the uh, what's it called Ashigari Rift or something I can't remember exactly what it's called where people find these carvings in a mountain that looks like them and then they can't resist the urge to go into those carvings but then when they go in they don't come back out but even knowing that people just can't resist the urge to go into the void and that's called the call of, call of the void that there's this pit of darkness that we just can't seem to resist even if we know it's dangerous we just feel like this pull towards it and then as you stare into the abyss you know the abyss stares back and the dream, we're going to go into this cave. I don't think there's a bear here. I'm going to go in here for a second to warm up. The dream that was there in uh, the interview transcript was different from the first one. The first transcript was more like a memory. At least that was my impression that they were describing a memory, not so much uh, a dream. But in this case, it was a, a dream. So every time they dream, they have the same dream. Now they're standing in front of a pit on bricks that bend because they're bending because they're bending towards the void. And it's the call of the void, call of the call of the unknown, call of the uncertain. Uh, and the need to kind of pull towards it. It's a bit like when you stand on the edge. I don't know if you ever had that feeling. You, you stand on, on, say, a mountaintop or something, something high up, and you're staring into... Um, I'm not sure how much how much time I want to spend here. You're staring into some sort of chasm or, or something, a death. You're basically staring into death, and this is part of you that thinks, I could just jump in, you know. I'm not suicidal or anything, I just could just jump in. If, if I really wanted to, you're standing on the edge of a mountain and you're looking down at the drop below, and there's a party that says, if I really wanted to, I could just jump down. I could. I'm not going to, but I could. And that's a call of the void, you know. And um, there's this whole Nietzsche and Freud thing to that. Now, in the dream he was talking about, he was also referring to this darkness. And that could be a literal thing. Like, some people would speculate that's like the Dark Walker or something. I don't think so, though. I think the Dark Walker is just like a one-off Halloween thing. I don't think there's anything to it, really. Um, I don't think it's that. It's more of 
and I don't think it's not necessarily an actual entity. I don't think this is referring to anything specific. Uh, I think it's more a manifestation of the psyche of the patient they're interviewing. So, in the classical sort of, I don't know, Freudian analysis of this, and what the patient is seeing the the darkness that's darker than the darkness on the other side, where there should be a wall, is some sort of representation of the patient, right? They're not. It's not actually there, that darkness. It could be interpreted in a billion different ways. So there's hardly actually worth even talking about it because it could be all sorts of things. It could be an actual thing that this machine triggers. That is an actual thing that this is, but it could also be a representation of the person's fears. Um, it could be a representation of uncertainty. It could be all sorts of things. We, uh, so it doesn't really mean anything by itself. And then at the end of the day, we need more context. Is this just a recurring dream for this person? Or is it um, something that's related to this machine that they're talking about? You just have to see. We don't really know. At some point I'll return to this and I'll give you my psychological analysis of it as a whole once we have the whole picture, which we don't have right now. Okay, here's our firmus. I haven't picked up any signal cache so far. And again, it's very cold. Here we are, firmus. Nobody hey, orange, sweet. Okay, we got our thermos. We're gonna head back, but we need to uh, need to warm up. We have very little health. Uh, we'll keep going in a second. Just need to warm up a bit, and then we'll probably sleep in the bunker actually. Turn around, still green. <clears throat> By the way, I'm just gonna say this. If you're watching and you find this sort of psychology talk very interesting, I should point out that Freudian stuff is not particularly scientific. And when I talk about Freudian stuff, I do it more in the analytical way because I'm not sure how familiar you are with it, but Freud and psychoanalysis is not particularly scientific nor accepted by psychology. It's not a field that is particularly root real it's it's more pseudoscience yeah. that's why when you study psychology you study psychology you don't study psychoanalysis psychoanalysis is and freud is history it's not actual science it's easy because if you think about it right if you take the rorschach test for example look at the stuff in front of you this k exit here what does that look like to you what does that look like right and then you say well it kind of looks like a wolf right? you got kind of like this the the, uh, the the nose and jaw hair and then the ears and so on right it kind of looks like a wolf and then i say oh that's interesting mm, you know. and then i interpret that and i might say something like that represents your urge to be in a pack and to be part of a group like wolves are right but what's really happening is that you are interpreting something ambiguous in a subjective way and then i'm interpreting what you're saying again so there's two levels of interpretation and both of them are subjective and none of them really mean anything how can i prove this to be right or wrong it's just an interpretation <laughs> i'm gonna keep going so it's like doubly interpretive and then if we start talking about what the patient's thinking like when they have a dream about a pit with bricks and a darkness on the other side if i were to say that oh that's the representation of your um, your id or your suppressed urges from childhood or whatever. How am I supposed to test that that's true? You know, and in the, the day, it's just introspection. It's not really real. It's a way of analyzing something. It's not a way of testing anything. Therefore, it's not science. It's just an analysis. But yeah, normally I wouldn't talk this much about it. I'm happy to throw in some psychology or science nuggets here and there when I play this game. But in this particular case, because we went to the bunker and what they're really doing is they're talking about dreams. Uh, there's a lot to say about it. And it ultimately depends on whether you choose to interpret that dream from that patient as either a literal Do thing I, I that the patient's experiencing in relation to some technology, or is it a subjective experience that's being interpreted in a 
artistic or subjective way it just depends like are we talking about a machine here that's inducing a specific dream and this this machine is somehow related to that is that what we're talking about or are we talking about uh, the complete subjective dream of a patient unrelated to this machine and we're trying to figure out what it means from a mental life point of view right that those are two different things but in the end of the day we don't know we don't know because we don't have more context <laughs> Okay, I haven't found any signals, but I'm running low on health. The aurora is almost over. Don't think I want to go much further, to be honest. It's almost daytime. I think we'll sleep here and then head back. We got our thermos. Uh, that's what matters. Yeah, I don't actually have... I didn't bring that much food with me. <laughs> because I didn't think we needed it, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but that's all right. Oh, let's... let's uh, Drink this birch tea. I think this is a good time to do that. I'll sleep 10 hours. I'll go back. So this episode of Rose of Fire on the Days is a little bit different from the other ones. In terms of showing you some exploits in this game. And a pretty deep analysis of something that we don't really know what it is. Okay, so we don't have much food here. I'm not going to eat the canned corn, but I will eat these. We'll just get some more cattails. Not a big deal. I'm going to eat six of them, I think. Uh, what time of day is it? Uh, evening, but it's not going to be... There's not going to be an aurora again. At least I don't think so. A little bit of shame we didn't find more any of those supply caches. But that's okay. There isn't really anything to find anyway. So now we're going to head back to the farm. Oh, we got a blizzard on our hands. Well, that's all right. Uh, we'll just head to the the cave by the plane crash. <clears throat> Let's just do that quick. Or to ski this ridge basement. We could do that too. Either is fine. We got our thermos. It's great. And we did the bunker, so now... Now we are good. Now we can go to uh, Milton. Do the next one. We can go to Skeeter's Ridge. That's why I went this way rather than to the right. We'll get cold, but I don't think it'll be cold for very long. Birch, which is the birch near Skeeter's Ridge, I believe. Yeah, there's the plane debris. And the plane itself. Oh, there's the burnt house. Here it is. Might as well grab these feathers if there are any. Yep. Oh, I haven't been here. Alright. Yeah, it seems like I haven't been. Oh. Uh, I haven't been here before. And this run. Seeing as it's a uh, blizzard, there won't be any wolves out, so I'll take advantage of that and just quickly check this area. We're going to go into Skeeter's Ridge Basement, but before I do, I'm going to check over here, see if there's some quality tools here. Should be over, over there's some ropes, but what I'm going is, here we are. There's very often tools in the snow here, so let's see. Uh, not today, it seems, not today. No. Oh. Hey, peaches. They fixed that glitch where you could use... You could eat a can of peaches until it was almost empty. And then you used it to make uh, peach pies. They fixed that. Okay, nothing there. Oh, that doesn't look like it's supposed to look like that. What, what's happening here? Is it a Rudiger's machine? 
I think this is Rodriguez machine is messing up the, uh, the infrastructure of trees. <laughs> All right. Wait, the tree is like breathing. I guess it's meant to be moving. Yeah. Same thing over here. I just realized. Yeah, probably a side effect of uh, the use of the machine, right? <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's head inside. Oh, I warm up here. And either wait out the blizzard or also. I haven't actually checked this out. I uh, got more peaches. Got one of these. Anything else around here? I'm starving. I would maybe eat the peaches, but I don't think so. Wow, more peaches. Oh. That's a lot of peaches. Gloves, so we don't need. Wood, so we don't need, but we'll take it. And. Wool socks, wool socks, wool socks. Well, this stuff will come wow, handy. combat pants. That's like the third combat pants that I found. That's insane. That's a lot. Going into Lopa. I've been blessed with that, but not wool socks. <laughs> uh, we're going to harvest this. And then I'm just going to wait this out, I think. Until we are warm. If the blizzard hasn't ended, we're still going to keep going. We go to the next shelter, which is the Draft Touches cabin. Yeah, it's still going. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm going to go this way. And we're going to head down this cliff here. I think it's this cliff. Yeah. Gonna head down here. Parkour. Down here. And then down here. And then we'll end up at the draft dodger's cabin. Should be right in front of us. What happened to the sound there? Did the uh, blizzard end? Yeah, it did. It did end. We now just have heavy snow instead. And I've been here before, it seems. It's got a torch here. I knew that I've been here before, but... Yeah, blizzard ended. Let's warm up a bit, though. Let's harvest our torch that we found. I'm not going to sleep here because I don't want to be, uh, let's see, in case they added anything new. Uh, I want to be tired later. Yeah. Last time then. Let's warm up. Yeah. Go. Oh, I'm starving. Ooh, this is a nice scene. I love this. The sun is going down, but we still have heavy snow. So looking this way, you don't get much. Just a silhouette. But here, look at this. You get the fiery red of the sky. We need two more of these. While it's still snowing. And you get the silhouettes of the trees. It still amazes me how incredible this game is in terms of its scenery. And how they managed to pull this stuff off. The interactions between weather effects. It's not just that they have really good weather. It's that they have interactions with weather. So now there's snow. The sun's setting over there. And you kind of get this this thing. Sometimes you can get kind of ghost trees. Everything looks white. And that's a whole other thing also. It's, it's very, very cool. And I, I find that fascinating. How good this game is with, uh, with its weather interaction. It looks like the snow is ending, I think. I'm not sure. We just have this. I'm gonna pick up some cattails because I need to refill my stash of 12. And we're going to get cold, but that's okay. Yeah, the snow ended, so now we just have this scenery. So that interaction was not so much an interaction, really, it was more of a transition, I suppose, from one weather to another. 
Can I map down here? Yes. Gotta warm up somehow. Are there cattails? Yes, there are cattails here. Hey, Birch Park, we'll take that too. And I'm gonna get cold, but that's okay. We're gonna go indoors soon, so that's alright. Yeah, there's more cattails. And we got the charcoal from this? No. Nope. Let's take it. I'm freezing. How many have I got? Ten. I need two more. Leave the rest. That's how I do it. The rest can just stay here. Backup food. You never know if you're passing through and you desperately need food. I could take one for good measure. Just eat one on the on the road. Take one. But yes, here we go. Beautiful scenery. This is one of my favorite parts of the long dark. Just walking around, seeing this stuff. It's amazing. But yeah, I look forward to continuing seeing the voids. There isn't much in this game I haven't done, but Sing Void and Buried Echoes is one of the few things I haven't done. It's just because it requires going to all these bunkers and stuff. Of course, you, there are ways to kind of cheat doing those things, but nah, I would like my first experience to be a natural one. And then try to analyze what's going on as they happen. And then from there, uh, we'll figure things out. And then we'll go to another bunker now, and then another bunker. And then things will be slowly revealed, but I'm pretty sure it will remain ambiguous in general. And this thing that we just had with the dream in, in this bunker, I could go on and on about it. There is so much to say with such a simple exchange like that, where this person is talking about a recurring dream, where there's a pit, the bricks are bending, there's a darkness on the other side. I could go on and on about that. But I think I've said more or less what I need to say and uh, what my opinion is. Um, because if I keep going on about it, then this becomes more of a, uh, I don't know, psychological analysis rather than just the long dark. Now it is, of course, part of the long dark. That's why these things are here in the first place. But I don't want to go on about it too much. Uh, but maybe when we do the next bunker, I can say some more stuff. Because there is a lot of stuff more to say. And uh, we'll see where this story takes us. What else there is to be found. And what else there is to say about these bunkers and this whole experiment or whatever it is. Let's eat our uh, one cattail. So we have 12 instead of 13. And now we are back here at the farm, and I don't think we can light a fire, can we? No. So I would like to harvest these things. Let's see two of these. Uh, these wolves, I would like to harvest them for the meat and everything, but it can wait, I suppose. Uh, at least we need to uh, get warm, so we could go out, in and out, warm up. I might do that actually. So let's uh, pass some time here. I'm gonna go back out. And we'll harvest a bit of this, these wolves while we can. So we'll take some of this. That was a creepy noise. Let's use the knife. We'll do the meat first. Guts and stuff later. I if I can drop any of this gear. All right. Uh, let's just drop this. Let's eat this. So we can just drop decoys quickly. And I think we're gonna go in and out again. I need to find until uh actually we could just stand here, can't we? But it's not as warm. How how warm is it? Ah, it's actually not so bad. We can just do this. 
Rinse and repeat. Let's keep going. Uh, we'll use the knife. The knife is fast as I think. Nah, hacksaw is good. Okay, this time we'll get cold, but oh well. I'm not really taking any cold damage though. I wonder if that animation has a set time that it uses. Okay, now it's very cold, so I think we're just gonna do... Eh, 15 minutes is fine. Like, I'm guessing the time this takes... I don't know, actually, I'm not sure what I'm talking about. Okay, that's the meat. Back up. Let's go over here. There's a wolf over here, right, that I killed? Somewhere over here. Uh, here I think? That's it. Uh, we can take all of this, it's fine. We have enough health. Also, we're not, we don't seem to be losing any health, actually, in the blizzard. That probably is a glitch, actually. Unless it happens at the end? No. Okay, I think that's probably a glitch. I, did, I didn't seem to lose any health from that. I don't think that's intended. <laughs> oh. There we go. And let's do one more time. Let's grab uh, a couple of guts. The rest is not that important. Really cool that fast. Oh. All right, let's. I think that's it. Let's go sleep. Did I say I hate and we'll do some inventory. I really do. I'm gonna pick these pies back up before I forget because now I want them. Uh, let's drop these guts here. And we got these pals. These are cool. Oh, nice. We can make the travail now. Oops, what's happened here? What? Why am I carrying? Should be in my inventory. Uh, oh, okay. And I think we'll sleep now until morning. Let's just, yeah, let's sleep now until morning, I think. Let's have some water. That was an interesting journey, wasn't it? Sleep for, it won't be 10 hours, it'll be 8 or 9. That's alright. There we go. Nice. We more rest reset the time. Uh, let's go and do some inventory. So first, let's get some food and water. So food first. Grab a couple bear steaks. We have a lot of wolf meat to cook as well, and we have lots of meat to collect from the barn, which we're going to do. Ooh, sunny out. Uh, Tempting to cook this stuff in that case. Yeah, because we don't have. Maybe we should do that. We can do that while we uh, organize inventory, for example. We'll take. Uh, we don't need water. We have loads of water, so we're just going to cook this stuff. We'll do it indoors, I think. Because I think. Uh, I don't have cabin fever risk, we're getting outdoors a lot. Let's see though. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Our mega torch. And then take the six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like that. We'll light a fire here. For sure. For sure. <laughs> I'll see myself out. Come on, little fire. 
Come on, little fire. Come on. Come on, little fire. I think I'll cook it in the pots because then it'll be a bit faster as well. There we go. Alright, oh, so yeah. we'll place yeah. this here. That there. Bows this. And then we'll cook meat. Nice, look at that. Okay, and then we have some peaches and stuff I want to organize here. So we got some more peaches. There's another one, yeah. Just ruined. Now can corn. Uh, we'll carry all this stuff. There's some stuff we can put in here. Down there. How many fire hardened arrows do you have? Enough, yeah. And then in that case, let's put these in here. Uh, we need to make some more bandages, actually. We can do that now. I had to use quite a few. How many do I have now? Four. Four is fine. Put these two in there. Uh, and I found one of the combat pants. Got birch bark as well. Okay, I think we're good there. Oh, also we have this, yeah. Which I think we'll just put in there as well. These ones. And also that, yep. Yeah. And this, and these. Uh, I'll just leave this as well. I don't really need that anymore. I was going to mark time against spawns, but it doesn't really matter anymore. I think we got everything sorted, yeah. And how we're looking here, cooking-wise. 11 minutes. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Three minutes. So let's go then and grab six more of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have cooked, 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 cooked. Put the cook. And there we go. How about that? Now I'll put this outside. Put that uh, here. Oops. Keep forgetting. I don't like that they drop those first. There we go. Nice. A bit more food. Very nice. Gotta check over there in a sec. Right. Give me two seconds. Alright. Three, three minutes. Anything else to do? Oh, really? One thing is I was going to make the travois, oh, they're still <laughs> bugging out. I wanted to make the travois, but um, I don't have deer heights for that. Lots of water. Out here we go. I suppose there's a deer around here, as long as there is one. No, I guess that's for next time. I could grab a gut, seeing as the weather's alright. All that stuff cooks inside. I think they could make this animation a little less head bobby. Grab this one too. Ten minutes is fine. We don't really need as many guts. We have loads already. But just to have... Might, might as well utilize it, right? 
We also need to harvest. Oh no, they despawned. Oh, I had three rabbits here. Remember? And I was gonna sort them out after the single void, but I guess I took too long. That's a shame. I kind of wanted their pelts. Especially to repair these things. Oh well. I'm gonna get more rabbits then. I didn't think they were gonna despawn that fast, because I just killed them. And what, two days? I thought they would last three days, but. Oh well. That's okay. Okay, so cooked. Pick this up, pack, pick that up. And yeah, that's done. Let's put all of this here. There we are. And we have two of these left. Might as well cook these two. Why not? Then we can make some water with the rest. Or, or teas. 15 minutes. There we are. Uh, yeah. I guess that's good enough. So we need 40 minutes. I put sticks on here. There we are. Good enough. Alright, uh, we might as well utilize the time and do this. Let's put half a litre this time though. And I think we're looking good. Got a bunch of stuff here. We're going to use this another time. We don't need it right now. Uh, we've got enough food. We've got enough water. We've got quite a lot of pelts, which is great. But we do need deer hides though, is the only thing. We do need deer hides. Uh, we can make arrowheads. <laughs> I mean arrows rather. So many cans. <laughs> it's, it's carrying it around for no reason. <clears throat> Let's make a little note for next time. Because we do want to do the rest of Single Void. Can I do this? But I also want to make the Trawa, but I don't have deer hides for that. So... Find deer. And I don't know if I necessarily will make it here. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Um, we need one deer hide, which is not a lot, but we still, you know, need to wait for it to cure. So might do that next time. We'll see. Let's see how long. Batchback T. Okay, take these back, take these back. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, all right. Five minutes to boil, yeah, I should be fine. There we go, we might even eat one of these. It's 8.75, yeah. Have a drink as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> just in time, <laughs> sweet. All right, we got it. So we did single void now, that was neat. So here's that, and that was quite interesting with the uh, with the whole uh, beta bunker and uh, the memory or of that dream. So it's still memory, of course, because it's, it's a dream, but it's still the memory of the dream, but anyway. So that's something that was interesting and it's open to interpretation what that was about because it depends on the context of it as well. I probably rambled on about it a little bit more than usual, but that's okay. And then we found the thermos, which is great. We got the thermos now. And I'm probably always going to be carrying a thermos around uh, because it's quite handy. I could just even put these in, I think. So it's, uh, let's see, it's 37.85. If I put uh, these in here. But it's the same, yeah, okay. Change anything. Makes sense. <laughs> I think we'll take this out in that case. All right, but it's handy to have. It hardly weighs anything, so I'm always going to be carrying one of these, I think, to make things a bit easier. All right, so we, we got it. We got single void. We also harvested most of the wolves outside, which is great. 
We got saplings. Uh, the, we missed out on the rabbits. I didn't think they were going to despawn that fast. So that was a bit of a mistake. Well, well. And we did a nice little teleportation glitch, which was neat, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, but before we go, there's one thing I gotta check. Gotta face my uh, fear suspicions here. So as I said at the beginning of this episode, I checked everywhere for this car battery. Including over there. And... Uh, and people kept saying it might be there, but then I didn't realize it might have meant here. So I'm just gonna check quickly see if there is a car battery here. I kind of hope there isn't because then I took the world's longest detour. Okay, seems good. Oof. I'm kind of relieved in a way. <laughs> because if it was there, I'd be like, oh god. It would be right next to me the whole time. Well, no. So I think it just didn't spawn. Probably bugged out or something. But yeah. Alright. Well, that's fine. So now we got it. Our right, day is fine. Alright. We did this single one. That was an interesting one. Alright. Okay, fellow survivors, I think I will leave you here. So that was a single void episode that was fun to progress. And we're going to do the next one as well. But before we head to Milton, there's a few things we need to do. So uh, I would like to get some deer hides for this uh, base. We don't have to do this, but I think I would like to get some deer hides, maybe some rabbit hides too. And um, have them cured here and also make the sled. So we can transport things to be easier from the barn, for example, where there's a ton of food. Uh, take that back here, for example. So I would like to do that. So I might next time hunt some deer and maybe some rabbits. We have enough supplies there now. I might hunt that just to get some hides, which would be good. And uh, I might also, when we go, I might take the car battery with me that was in the bunker. Because I know that in Milton, there isn't a car battery by the radio tower. And usually people just take a car battery from Milton itself because there's lots of cars in Milton. So the odds of finding a car battery is pretty high. But, you know, what if I don't find one? What if? Then I'd rather not go back and forth. So I might actually drag that car battery with me to Milton. It's not the worst thing to do. Uh, we'll see. We'll see, though. In any case, that was Single Void and the Void glitch itself. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this episode. Tune in next time for more surviving. See you next time, survivors. Bye-bye.